So for a little lesson on this piece, um, you can grab the sheet music. Um, there's a link for that underneath the video, so go pick that up. Uh, it's just in a PDF. Um, and uh, you can kind of treat this piece in different sections, of course. Um, there's a refrain that just keeps happening the whole time. It's uh, you know four bars long, and it just happens at the end of each section. You can repeat each section as well, but that refrain will continue to happen. So in, in, the, in the performance I just gave, I just went straight through the piece. But um, you could choose to repeat every single section, or just the variations, or just the refrain twice each time. Depends on how repetitive you want it to be and how long you want the piece to last. So a couple of comments about this piece. Um, I've made a couple of small changes um, in terms of the, the voicing of the chords. Um, the Baroque guitar that this is written for has five choruses or five strings, and um, and I've looked. I've, included the sixth string, especially in some of the chord strums. So just put it into root position with the E in the bass. Also around the cadence situation at bar like one, two, three, four, I've thrown instead of this or this, I've put the B in the bass, which makes the ornament a little bit harder if you put an ornament there, um, or depends on what type of ornament you put there. But nevertheless, I've thrown that in as well. Um, all the ornaments in this piece are worth talking about because um, he really just uses this little symbol to represent all the different ornaments. And so it could be a trill, it could be an appoggiatura, it could be a mordant. Um, so it's kind of up to the performer's interpretation. So it's very flexible in that way. Also, at the end of each section, you could repeat. There's kind of repeat signs in the original tablature. I didn't. I went straight through the piece. And um, I also stopped at the end of each section and kind of like did a writ and like almost held the final chord for like a whole note. But um, there's some flexibility there. I've added some other videos on the site um, that you can check out um, of other performers who play it much more like straight through um, each section without a break in the rhythm. I kind of treat, treat each section as its own and kind of do a big writ and then start the next one fresh. So there's different ways to interpret this. Um, let's just go through it. Um, these strums, on the Baroque guitar, the string tension is much less, and the Reschiato might sound a little bit better. Um, I prefer on the modern classical guitar to just do a sweep with my thumb. Um, I find that it's just a little bit more pleasant, um, and that kind of intensity um, is a bit much on the modern guitar, but it depends on your personal preference and on your sound and everything like that. So you could do it with, you know, a raschiato. 
if you prefer. Um, it'd be very period appropriate, but of course it sounds much different on the Baroque guitar. Much better, I think, when you have lots of strumming on the Baroque guitar, so um, I'll leave that up to you as well. Um, let's just go through the piece. Um, I've revoiced this chord too, um, just put it into root position as well. All the slurs are his originals. So I do a trill there, a cross string trill. A, M, I, A, P. A, M, I, P. Or double trill. Or you could just do a, a poggiatura. If you find that too difficult, easily just serve as a suspension from the bar before. Any of those are totally appropriate. The original has just these notes here. So that's nice, but then you have to get up there as well. That's, it's nice to have that option though, and that is more close to the original, but I decided to again throw that into root position do a cross string trill instead. Just my personal preference, but feel free to shift up and do it there um, or find a different solution of your own. And like I said, I've included some other videos on the site that you can check out of people doing different things for that section. There, I shift down and then do kind of a, a, a suspension of Pagetura. So these, if you look at the score, the small notes aren't in the original. So those are things that I've added to kind of complete these lines. C, B, A, and then in that bar seven, B, A, G sharp. So I've added just a couple of extra notes there to fill out the musical lines, but I made them small, so take them out if you want. If you want to be closer to the original, you just play. It's actually much easier. Um, that bass note is, is an addition as well. But with all the notes, it's, it nicely completes those lines. I like it. It's not that hard. Yeah, for that ornament on that E chord that you keep seeing, um, I'm doing a little appoggiatura from the D sharp to E. So I strum the chord with that dissonance and then resolve it with the hammer-on. So D sharp going to E. You could do a, a, a mordant if you want. Uh, kind of harder to pull off though. I just like that dissonance resolving. Then you do the next bit and then on to bar 13. Careful of the rhythms here. trill there. In that bar, um, again, I've revoiced it a little bit. I think in the original it goes open A. But that it's pretty poor voice leading and it, I think it sounds better on the Baroque guitar than it does on the modern classical. So I've done a, um, the, the B7 chord, the B chord, and then turned it into a B7, an inner voice so it resolves nicely to the final chord. Then you do the, the refrain again, and then at bar 21, you have, I love this section. I do a turn here. But it more accurately the way it's notated. Or one, two, three. You could do all sorts of things there. I just like that. That little turn. So I'm going E D sharp. So E D E D E D C sharp D E. Those are all D sharps. 
Then the refrain, and then in bar 29. So in the original, this is all up an octave in the bass. And then it jumps back down because he doesn't have a sixth string. But on the sixth string guitar, you can actually lower that line and have one continuous rising line the whole time. E, F, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Which is, is so great to have like that imitation in the piece, but also that full register so you can do the actual imitation. Just trill there from the B and the G to F sharp and then you have the final refrain lots of different choices for how you treat this piece um, I think my general approach was to treat the refrain as like this kind of more stable thing and then the variation as being a little bit more something you can ease into and be more expressive with um, but you could try playing just much more rhythmic um, I used I did use the metronome a few times and learn the piece. I did learn the piece um, straight through with the metronome very stably, but then I just kind of turned it off and relaxed at the end of each section and, and did what I wanted with it. But um, you could you could definitely have a more rhythmic approach if you wish. Um, I have a bunch of, of notes on the piece, um, performance notes, so you can check out everything that I did with the arrangement. Um, but that's the basic idea. So I hope you enjoy.